Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about natural family planning. And to join me in the discussion is Chiquita and Tom Seeson. Welcome to our show today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's nice to have you here to enlighten us on uh, what we call NFP, natural family planning. And for the folks that are with us that might be unfamiliar with that, uh, why don't you just give us an idea of what exactly that means? Well, natural family planning is knowledge and understanding of the natural, normal, male and female reproductive anatomy and physiology, and then taking that information and using it to plan a family. Specifically, it's based on the fact that a man is fertile all the time and a woman experiences cyclic fertility. In other words, uh, there's fertile and infertile phases of the cycle. You know, NFP was not created by the Catholic Church. It's not Catholic birth control. It's not Vatican roulette, but it's well to understand that the Catholic Church teaches something because it's true, not the other way around. It's true because the Church teaches it. Uh, God has created us with obvious signs and the intelligence to understand our fertility, and the Church is trying to point that out to us. That's a good distinction because I really never thought of it that way. You know, oftentimes when uh, we talk about certain issues, we tend to think that, well, this is something that the church created, the church made, made up, but uh, it's good to know what those, those background information uh, points are. That really leads us to the next question, and what is, is it exactly the history of natural family planning? It had to originate somewhere, mm -hmm. and where did it originate, and why did it originate? Okay. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question, because uh, NFP is not something that was just um, invented last year, or two years ago, or even a hundred years ago. Uh, the, the concept of, of natural family planning or women's fertility has been around for over 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ancient Egyptians knew that there was um, some distinction between a woman's menstrual cycle and her, uh, her fertile time. There's been some hieroglyph uh, hieroglyphics found that, that showed a woman um, uh, with a, a, a vessel with red and clear, you know, meaning mm -hmm. menstruation and her, her mucus time or fertile time. So we know that back that far there's been some connection. Uh, the Australian Aborigines, they passed down the information from, from one generation to the other, so they knew that there was, there was something um, there. Uh, Native American women, at the time of their passage from being young women to uh, adults, the secrets of their fertility were passed down by the women from one generation to the next. And then what I really find is interesting is that uh, African women were taught the art of of, of taking their the cervical mucus at their fertile time, putting it on flat stones, rubbing it on flat stones, and they would put it out in the sun to dry. Mm. Kind of like uh, how our chemists uh, do with uh, sl glass slides. Mm -hmm. And then they would look at those stones and they would determine where they were as far as their fertility because, you know, certain, um, uh, at certain times during the fertile time, the, the, the mucus makes different ferning patterns. So they would be able to determine where they were uh, in their fertile time or just by looking at that mucus. Well, you know, so, it's, it's, the process is almost so sophisticated sometimes that, that it's been developed over these millennium that, mm -hmm. that uh, gives us a real indication that this mm -hmm. is not just some fly-by-night thing, mm -hmm. but this is uh, an actual proven right. uh, method that, that would assist uh, couples in actually uh, planning their family. Mm -hmm. And how do we, before we get into some more of the specifics, uh, why is it important for us as, as Catholics to uh, understand natural family planning? Why is it important for us to have this, this method, if you will, and what exactly are the different methods? Does that make sense to say it that way? 
Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, well, it's interesting that um, the knowledge about the reproductive systems were around about a hundred years before any thought was using you to take that information and use it to plan a family. Mm -hmm. And then it was in the 1920s, there were two doctors, Dr. Ogino from Japan and Dr. Naus from Austria, and they worked independently. Uh, they developed methods for calculating the fertile time frame. Uh, it was based on the calendar, but it did not take into account uh, irregular cycles. However, it was 80% effective in postponing pregnancy. So that was the first attempt, and it was called rhythm. And then in the mid-1930s, there was a Catholic priest, a Father Hillebrand from Austria, who discovered the use of the basal body temperature in relation to mm -hmm. fertility. Mm -hmm. This method is based on the fact that the woman's basal body temperature rises after ovulation. And um, it's a natural sign of the body. Mm -hmm. And it's 99% effective in postponing pregnancy. And then in the 1950s, Dr. John and Lynn Billings of Australia developed the Billings ovulation method. Uh, this method is based on a woman's cervical mucus and its relation to fertility, which again is another normal sign. Mm -hmm. um, it predicts the um, coming of ovulation and is 90% effective in postponing pregnancy. And this Billings ovulation method was introduced in the United States in the 1970s. We also have Dr. Odeblad from Sweden, who has done extensive research on cervical mucus production and the importance of the cervix mm -hmm. um, in relation to the woman's fertility. And then in the 1970s, we had Dr. Keefe from the United States, who developed the examination of the cervix as an added sign. Now, the symptothermal method is a combination of the ob observations of the basal body temperature, the Billings ovulation method, and other body signs. And according to the World Health Organization, the symptothermal method is 99% effective mm. in postponing pregnancy, which is equal to chemical contraceptives and surgical sterilization. Mm. What's interesting is it's all natural. Mm -hmm. It's all part of... Uh, the makeup of, of mm -hmm. who we are, especially and primarily the woman's body, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that that's, uh, I think, for many of us in our uh, health conscious world, it's important for us to look at natural ways of of doing things like that instead of in introducing things into uh, our systems that really could have some uh, long lasting adverse effects down mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got about a, a few minutes left of our first segment. I'd like to uh, talk just very briefly, what's the difference between that and birth control? Because we are very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Briefly, what is that? Well, <clears throat> we don't like to call natural family planning birth control, it's family planning. Right. Well, the difference between artificial contraception and birth control is, you know, we hear it all the time. Well, birth control and NFP, it's the same thing. So what's, you know, what's, what's wrong with artificial contraception? Well, the difference is, is that you look at um, uh, birth control, which is artificial contraception, the use of devices, pills, or whatever. That is anti-procreation. Mm -hmm. National family planning is, as Shaquita said, taking the the normal natural signs of a man and a woman and using your your god-given uh, intelligence to use that information to plan your family mm -hmm. so in essence natural family planning is um, not anti procreation it's non procreation so that's the big difference the artificial is anti uh, the natural family planning is non because you you know it's you're still open to life. You know, you're always open to life using natural family planning. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but we're going to take a quick break. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. What have you done for your marriage today? I gave my wife a hug this morning. I thought I, I love her. Instead of sitting on the couch, I hope to clean up. I cooked my husband's uh, favorite breakfast. I sent my husband a love email. What have I done for my marriage today? It's a good question. 
gave her a call and say, thinking of her. And the kids. I uh, did her hair this morning. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> We're going to the museum as a family. What have I done for my marriage today? I made my wife coffee and breakfast this morning. It's going to be her birthday next week, so I've been spending time today making arrangements to make that extra special. Oh, we're spending the day together? I bought her an orchid. <laughs> Hassan was able to let me sleep in by taking him care of him in the morning. I read the newspaper to my wife, and it cracked her up. She's, but she's still laughing. <laughs> what have you done for your marriage today? Small changes can make a world of difference. Get started at foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Their numbers are growing. More than a year ago. More than a decade ago. More people now living in this state than nearly any state in the Union. One out of every ten families in America. One out of every six children in America. 33 million Americans teetering on the brink of hunger, sickness, hardship. 33 million Americans descending into poverty. And as their futures fall, so does our nations. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Tom and Chiquita Sison about natural family planning. You know, before we uh, took a break, we kind of uh, talked about the difference between natural family planning, which is natural, and mm -hmm. artificial um, contraception, birth control, which is totally unnatural. So let's go back to that whole idea of artificial contraception and, and talk about the, the a marked difference between what is natural and what is artificial. Okay. Well, we really stress, when we teach our classes, we really stress um, with our couples that there really are five advantages to using natural family planning. First of all, it's harmless. Uh, there are no chemicals, uh, no uh, devices, uh, no allergies, uh, no harmful effects to the man or the woman. Mm -hmm. And if a child is conceived, there are no harmful effects to the child. Right. Um, you know, we really get concerned because, um, you know, women who take the pill and they conceive and, and they continue to take the pill, you know, what harmful effects mm -hmm. may uh, be caused to the, to the new life. Um, it's reliable. Um, natural family planning is the only method of family planning that can be used to both postpone a pregnancy and achieve a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And we've had couples come to our classes who, who seek both, both of those. Mm -hmm. Um, it's inexpensive. Uh, for us, it's a one-time cost. We teach the simple thermal method, and if the couples take it from us, it's a $40 cost. It's all the materials, the thermometer, the uh, instructions, uh, uh, their manual that they get, and uh, we tell the couples that uh, as their lives progress and their lives change, for example, um, childbirth, breastfeeding, menopause, that we are always there as a resource. They can come back to classes without any cost to them and sit through classes. And we've had couples come back who have finished up their family. They've had you know, as many children as they figure they can have. And so they come back as for a refresher. Mm -hmm. uh, it's natural, of course, natural family planning. We're all into the green right now. You know, everything sure. is green and everything is natural. And, and it's cooperative. And the nice thing about natural family planning is that it's something that's shared between the couple, the husband and the wife. The burden of family planning is not on the wife's shoulders nor the man's shoulders. So that's let's, let's talk about um, natural family planning as something that might not be as popular among certain people, but, but popular among those people who really want to make good decisions for themselves. And I guess, you know, I, I don't want to be judgmental at all, but I think it's important for us and for, for families mm -hmm. and couples to make good decisions for themselves. So why is that important and how does that um, uh, help in making NFP a, a popular choice? Well, natural family planning is very popular among the people who know about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the divorce rate among married couples who practice NFP is less than 5%. Uh, because natural family planning promotes romance and communication, it helps deepen a couple's intimacy and strengthens, strengthens their marriage relationship. So women don't hear about NFP from their doctors uh, because prescribing contraception is a multi-billion dollar industry. It's been reported that some OBGYN practices 
uh, as far as contraception is concerned, that it makes up 80% of the income for the practice. I, I would have never mm -hmm. thought of that, but when you think of some of those uh, influences that have crept into society, usually there's a dollar figure that's part of that. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's, it's important to know that. So it, it, in making those informed decisions for ourselves, mm -hmm. you, you know, we started our first segment um, talking about that this is not something that the church created, but this is something that goes back uh, thousands and thousands of years. What does the church say about it though? So what, what over uh, the history of the Catholic Church has uh, the papacy said about it, for example? Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. um, there really are um, a lot of um, uh, papal dec decrees, um, encyclicals supporting natural family planning over the years. I have a few of them listed here. Um, uh, Gaudi Metzpes, uh, the Pastoral Constitution on the Church in, modern, in the Modern World, which came from the Second Vatican Council. Uh, of course, Humanae Vitae, the, right. <laughs> the, the elephant in the room uh, on human life, uh, Pope Paul VI in 1968, uh, Humanae Vitae came out. And it's interesting about Humanae Vitae is just a very small portion of that encyclical was about family planning. Exactly. The rest of it was about uh, uh, marriage, family life, responsible right. parenthood, mm -hmm. but everybody focuses on that, right. that one, little, one little section. Mm -hmm. uh, John Paul II has three uh, uh, fantastic uh, writings. One of his uh, familiar, familiaris consortio, the role of uh, the Christian family in the modern world. Uh, Donum Vitae, Respect for Human Life, and ev Evangelicum Vitae, The Gospel of Life. And then, of course, he came out with his Theology of the Body, right. which is absolutely so beautiful. Uh, I, if every couple, every engaged couple could just have a, 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 a short session on Theology of the Body, I, th I think attitudes would change uh, immediately. There's been a lot of scriptural references in the Old Testament, you know, Genesis, the story of creation, be fruitful and multiply, Exodus, the Ten Commandments, uh, the story of Onan, uh, the second story of creation after the flood. The New Testament, uh, Matthew gives us Beatitudes and, and talks about adultery. Uh, the Romans speaks of non-unitive acts, Corinthians, uh, Galatians, just, I mean, it's just all there. It's so, there. So, so the source of it really um, if we could say, because it's so natural, really finds its, uh, its source in God himself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's very important. And going back to your first question, uh, why we Catholics, I, I, something to that effect, it's so important to us, is because it all goes back to God. God gave us all this information packed into our nice little bodies. That's, and it's all here, mm -hmm. and all here. Yeah. It's interesting because as, uh, we've got uh, a minute left in our middle segment, so we're probably gonna save any real discussion for the last segment, but we know that people are always looking for the quick way and the, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the surefire way. Mm -hmm. But uh, there, as you had mentioned, there's, there's a very high percentage of um, those who are very successful using natural family planning. And I think we're going to talk about that specifically uh, when we come back, but we're gonna take a quick break. So okay. please stay with us. We'll okay. be back in a moment. Good. What have you done for your marriage today? I gave my wife a hug this morning. I thought uh, I love her. I uh, did her hair this morning. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I cooked my husband's uh, favorite breakfast. I bought her an orchid. What have I done for my marriage today? I sent my husband a love email. I read the newspaper to my wife and it cracked her up. She's, but she's still laughing. <laughs> what have you done for your marriage today? Make a change for the better. Need help? Go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Welcome back to our show. We're talking about natural family planning with Tom and Chiquita Cecil. Uh, you know, before we took a break, the one thing that I had mentioned was that many folks look for a surefire methods uh, for whatever, uh, because unfortunately we have become so accustomed to things being done quickly or uh, easily instead of kind of taking the more longer or the more uh, road that takes courage. So let's talk about that whole surefire method with natural family planning because in the beginning you did mention that. So let's talk a little bit more about that now. Okay, well, 
The effectiveness of most natural methods is very high, but no method is, of family planning is foolproof. Sure. Uh, other than absolute abstinence or complete castration, mm -hmm. uh, in other words, removal of the man's testes or the woman's ovaries. Um, there's no guarantees in life but three, mm. death, taxes, and God loves you. <laughs> um, so pregnancy is always a possibility regardless mm. of method used. It's part of God's design. Uh, we are meant to be ministers of creation, not masters of creation. Mm -hmm. Life is a gift of God and any child should be warmly welcomed. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that term you use, uh, being ministers of creation instead of master. We only have one master, mm -hmm. you know, we are all servants. And so there's that whole sense that, you know, I learned certainly, I learned something new about natural family planning, but I also learned something new theologically from you. And I th think that's a powerful statement, mm -hmm. that whole sense that, you know, we are at our best when we understand uh, who we are in kind of the realm of of, of God and us, you know, mm -hmm. God is so bigger than us. And sometimes we tend to be in control of God when we're really not. Mm -hmm. And so that whole sense that, that we are ministers, I think is a beautiful sentiment. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let's go into, um, we talked about the history of, of NFP, but let's talk about it here in the United States and how has it really caught on here in the United States and any sense of how it's going on uh, historically around the world? Well, you, you hit well, upon around the world, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, natural family planning is taught and used in over 120 countries around the world. And it's just not for Catholics. It's embraced by people of sure. many faiths. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was the Billings who first introduced it in, in China, oh, wow. where they, at that time, had the one-child policy. Sure. So their effectiveness rate was 100% because the motivation was so high there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an interesting fact to uh, know that artificial methods are used when they're not needed and are least affected, effective when they're, uh, when they're needed most, and that's during the fertile time. Sure. For an example, uh, the condom is 64% effective in postponing pregnancy when used during the fertile time, mm -hmm. and the pill can be as little as 74% effective mm -hmm. when used during the fertile time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And as far as the United States, well, it depends. It depends on um, the support that the, the diocese gives natural family planning. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some dioceses where uh, the bishops are gung-ho. There are other dioceses where, you know, not so much. Um, we did find out though that uh, Father Fight, um, who served on a commission in the diocese, attended a, a natural family planning convention in Omaha mm -hmm. a while ago. And he came back and he said, you know, the diocese that support NFP, their seminaries are full. Mm -hmm. Because um, natural family planning, artificial contraception is, a, is selfish. It's mm -hmm. a selfish way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So you you don't want to give up your children, you know, if you're in that type of thing, whereas natural family planning, you're open, you're, you're more generous, and that's what he said. He said those uh, seminaries are full and the diocese is where it's uh, supported. What's interesting is if uh, we could kind of recapture those times mm -hmm. where, where we as, as human beings were far more generous, not only with ourselves, but with the gifts that God has given us, and one of the greatest gifts out of families are children. Mm -hmm. You know, we could be more generous right. mm -hmm. uh, in understanding with that. Um, that's really a, a nice outlook. Right. Let's go back to um, something you had mentioned uh, earlier, Tom, when we were talking about papal decrees. We know that uh, St. Pope John Paul II uh, wrote Theology of the Body, and mm -hmm. I know many priests in their um, yeah. deliberations with uh, engaged couples Talk about that specifically. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important for us to understand, especially when we talk about natural family planning mm -hmm. and also about procreation and life? Okay. Because, you know, we as humans, we are different than the animals. God gave us the ability to think and to reason and to use that intelligence to make uh, wise decisions. Right. Um, and then the essence of, of a marriage, there's, there's a, a twofold purpose to you know, sexual intercourse in a marriage. 
and it's unitive and procreative. Okay, I brought a little demonstration here. Okay, this is this is the heart. This is the this is the couple, you know, as one, um, and this is the essence of the act, both unitive and procreative. When you introduce artificial contraception, what that does is it splits it apart. You no longer have a beautiful whole heart. It's mm -hmm. taken apart. So. Um, that is one aspect of, of natural family planning, that it breaks that bond between the couple. It's a, a, a very selfish bond. Yeah. And going back to something that Chiquita said earlier, is that, you know, it, uh, it can, artificial methods can lead to other issues and problems within married life. And, um, and I do think that when a couple uh, are on the same page and when they're respectful of one another and one mm -hmm. another's body and one mm -hmm. another's concerns, then greater things can happen. And, and I would think that the testament that you two have with your own life and married life, uh, practicing these things uh, has been something that has enhanced your marriage. You mm -hmm. would agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, yes very much so. Yes. Now, in the last few minutes of our time together, what would you like to share very briefly with the folks that are with us, uh, especially those who might be considering using this method of natural family planning? Very briefly. Well, I think that when you look at society in general, and we talked about Humanae Vitae, uh, Pope Paul VI was very prophetic when he came out with Humanae Vitae. He, he really, he, he was able to see the um, widespread use of contraception. There, would be f there were four things that would happen. Number one, um, uh, man would lose his respect for women. Number two, it would increase marital uh, infidelity and the breakdown of the family. Uh, third, um, it would place a dangerous weapon in the hands of the government who would use contraception and population control to control the people. And, and fourth, um, he said that what, what, would, what would happen was it would give a person, uh, a feeling that they had unlimited dominion over their lives, mm -hmm. which we don't. It's, it's God's life. And that's why natural family pl planning is so beautiful. It's so simple. It's, it's it, as I said, you have all the tools in your, in, your, in your body that God gave you, and you use your mind to um, use those tools. Well, Tom and Chiquita, Seasons, thank you so much for being with us and enlightening us about natural family planning and also sharing the journey with us that the two of you have been on. Uh, we certainly appreciate that very much. Thank well, you thank for you again. Us. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.